Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Trap on the Boomer Bus channel. I'm your host, Terry, and today I'm doing a player spotlight for Adam Shaheen. Again, player spotlight, just looking at a player real quick, talking about um, what they've done, what they might do going forward, giving them a label as a centerpiece starter or young piece to build around a, a sorry, I missed a, a core player, not centerpiece. Young piece to build around, a starter, backup, or none of that. Um, also, I just want to say, uh, look out for another video coming up real quick. I'll be talking about my expectations for the 2018 season. And there'll be part one and part two is when I'll be taking all your comments. And I want to have enough comments to read about in part two. So uh, look out for that video. Make sure you comment. Make sure you tweet, uh, email, all those things. Just to give you a heads up. Anyway, it's a, it's a long off season. I know we almost there, y'all. We almost to Hall of Fame week. So, uh, training camps getting ready to start, all the fun stuff. But we're here with another spotlight and we're talking about the young tight end, Adam Shaheen, who just had his rookie year going into his second year. Now, uh, usually I like to get the stats out of the way first and that's what we're going to do. Uh, Adam Shaheen appeared in 13 games overall. Uh, designated as a starter for seven of those games, so mostly healthy and available. Um, but then those seven games, he or 13 games, he had 12 catches, 127 yards, and three touchdowns. Um, so not stellar, we know. Um, I wouldn't say those are nothing, but you know, if you were around in, then <laughs> those might just be nothing. Um, but Still, that's what he gave us. Um, and the book on Adam Shaheen, as far as the Bears went last year and the fans go, is that he has a lot of potential, but we never got to see him in a situation to show that potential. Uh, most people would probably tell you that for some reason, I want to say it was the Chiefs game. Um, but one of those games where they kind of let Adam Shaheen loose a little bit. And showed you what he could do um, was just a snippet, though, uh, throughout the season. But mostly people feel like that rookie year was kind of wasted what we didn't get to see. Now, for me, part of that is John Fox and his run first, grinded out system. Um, so I could agree with you there. But the other part is, from what we heard, is he didn't earn a starting spot. Evidenced by the fact he didn't start all the time. Um, and some would say Trubisky was the same way, but they was like, Hey, we just got to get him out there and let, you know, the same thing that happens with every unpatient team these days, uh, or impatient, unpatient is not a word, but impatient teams where they just got to throw people out there. Um, they get on the opposite side that they're like, Oh, what's wrong with this dude? He's not playing right away. Rookies typically don't play right away, especially at, um, Especially at the skill positions where there is a lot of, uh, getting used to different things and the offensive line, defensive line, there's certain physical tools you could just get away with. But in skill positions, there's a lot of technique to be learned. And so a lot of them don't usually start. And it's just the last five or so years, people have become incredibly impatient. And they also think if you don't start, there's something wrong with you. Now, something wrong with you in the fact like, oh, he's just never going to be good. That's not the case. You're a rookie. And Adam Shaheen is newer to football, and he came from a super small school. So the word was his blocking needed to improve. He couldn't absorb the playbook as it was, and so he didn't get on the field. That's okay to me. I mean, that's natural, I should say. I wouldn't say I want that to happen, but if that's happening, then no, don't put them on the field. Don't put them on there just to put them on there. So that's how I felt about it uh, personally. Now, tight end, though, is a different uh, animal where it gives you a little more hope going into the future. Because at first, everybody's going to be like, more open offense, naggy, he's going to get more opportunities. Yes, he's going to get more opportunities. Does that make him a better player? Not exactly. From what I saw with Shaheen, and I'll go back to the draft, I do the draft stuff, and so you can listen to my opinion. You might think my opinion is crap, but here's my opinion on uh, Shaheen coming out. Wouldn't touch him. This is a Jimmy Graham-type level uh, project. 
And we've seen other projects, but Jimmy Graham is the one that have worked out the most to where you're converting a guy. Um, Shaheen is a basketball player, also a football player, but a raw football player. He got away with um, just outsizing a lot of people with his natural size. He's a huge dude. Yes, I give him that. And so he got away with that. His technique was not there. He had a lot of movement skill for someone that big, which made people very excited. I'll give him that. But as a football player, especially picking in the second round, that's not something that I would have done. Now, it's not against the person, Adam Shaheen. I don't know much about him as a person or didn't, and I still don't. Um, It wasn't even 100% against the player. From what I saw, which was very little, he dominated, and I already had my video on small school prospects, wanted the number one rule, you want to see him dominate. He did that, but it was mostly against the situation, like second round, picking the guy in the in the group with a lot of great tight ends. That was the other issue. You had one of the best tight end groups I had seen ever, and you went with Adam Shaheen, so... That was that. And then, of course, he came on very late to the scene in the scouting community, and it it was pretty much all buzz going into the draft. It wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't the due diligence that everybody else had. So for me, it was a red flag. It was no, I wouldn't touch him. Um, And again, more because of the situation. So then you put him in the team was run first. It's very hard nose. I just felt like that wasn't a good fit for him. So like I was saying, tight end, though, is a different animal these days where you're able to get out there and make plays even if you aren't a great route runner. Uh, two people, I tell you, I swear, Zach Ertz, I was like, okay, he's a good combo tight end, but he's never going to be a big-time receiver. Now, again, you could change your body and get a little faster, but he just was not the receiving type, especially at Stanford where you knock heads off. And Hunter Henry, who I still don't think is a good receiver per se, those are two I'm like, yeah, they're never going to pop like that. But we got into this point in the league where uh, teams really like to go with the mismatch. And that's that's what happens, as I've said, with football. When you keep changing so much, going against the grain is going to kill you. So when you keep getting your defense smaller and quicker and faster, when they all of a sudden get bigger and you someone bigger, it's a mismatch. So that's what's happening with tight ends. They're killing people in man. And then in zone, they they don't have to run uh, really crisp routes to be open in the gap of the zone. And so uh, teams are killing them that way, too. So what you see is is you don't have to be that skilled as a tight end to be effective. Now, to be an all-star type caliber, of course, you still got to have all the requisite skills. But to be effective, like you saw Shaheen pop in a couple of plays, you don't have to be, you know, top tier to be effective this day when you have an open offense. And so going into Nagy's offense, with his natural size, leaping ability, and strength, I do expect him to do a lot more going into this year. I, I honestly, and and again, it's hard to say what I've seen on offense, but I still think at any rate, you got to be able to block. And Shaheen, I thought, had the, the attitude to block that I wasn't expecting, but he still needs the technique. So if he can get that together, then he's on the field a lot more. Other than that, at least I would say to me, a successful season for Shaheen is being a red zone threat. You see he had three touchdowns. A lot of tight ends that play full-time don't have three touchdowns. He is a mismatch, size mismatch like Gronk in the uh, end zone. I know they call him baby Gronk or whatever. He hasn't earned that, but he is a size mismatch. So you talking about uh, going on the top shelf over somebody or – you know, faking a fade and hitting a slant and shielding off somebody, he can naturally do that off the jump. So a successful season for me for Shaheen, I would say is about seven or eight touchdowns in the end zone at least. They ain't got to be big time touchdowns, but in, you know, red zone touchdowns at least. 
And then anything on that is icing on the cake for me. So, cause I honestly wouldn't even want to see him with a, like a thousand yards and two touchdowns. Like to me, that means something went wrong. I would like to see him. I'd rather see him with eight or 10 touchdowns and, you know, 300, 400 yards receiving. So that's the way I'm looking at it. As far as a label, I honestly have to just label him a starter, a fringe starter. And because a young piece to build around, I'm not ready to claim we have to build around Shaheen. He hasn't shown me anything that says we need to build around this guy. So I have to give him a French starter. Um, I do think he should have the opportunity to get out there if he knows the playbook. Get out there and show what he can do in a more open offense. Um, and then let him sink or swim from there. So that's where I'm at with it. But anyway, it went on long enough. Go to comment section. Let me know what you think about Adam Shaheen's season last year. What do you think about him going forward? Do you think he's a young piece to build around? Have you seen enough to say that? Do you think he's a starter or do you think he's just a backup red zone threat? Let me know in the comment section. Thumbs up, subscribe, share it around, get the convo started. And remember, stay up and bear down.